Okay, welcome to a video on GoodNotes annotation and toolbar use. So once you have the GoodNotes app up and you have either uploaded a document or you have a blank page in there, you are ready to annotate. And one thing I would like to know is that if you press and hold on a particular notebook within a class or folder, you can actually move that notebook around to change the order, thus potentially keeping yourself more organized. So I'll move this notebook one, which is the blank one I'll be working with here. And the more notebooks that you put in each of these folders, they just wrap around each bookshelf, um, just like a standard bookshelf. So I'll click on notebook one. That's what we'll be working with today. Um, I'm going to go through the toolbar, which is at the top here. And I'll just go through left to right what each of these buttons functionalities are. So in the very top left, you'll notice there's a left arrow. And if I click that, that just takes me back to the folder or the class where all my notebooks are housed. I'll click the notebook again to get back in. The next one is the grid, or what I call the grid. This grid is where you can see the contents of the notebook that you are in, or in other words, it's your ability to see multiple pages at once. Here you can also copy pages or delete pages of your notebook by clicking Edit, and then you can see that if I, let's say, click page three, and want to delete it, now I can delete page three, and it is nice that it kind of gives you that last warning. Are you sure you really want to delete? Yep, delete it, now page three is gone. Um, click out of that. The plus is to add, so if you'll click on the plus, you'll notice I can add an image, a text box, a bookmark, a page above or below the current page I'm on, or I can import. So for example, I can add an image, from my photos, from my camera roll, and you'll see that I've taken a few pictures which are basically just snapshots of this um, iPad screen. And then what I can do is I can resize it by grabbing the blue dots on the ends and either making it smaller or larger. There we go. And then I can put my finger on it and kind of move it around um, anywhere on the screen I would like. So if I want to put it in the top right, I can click away from it, you'll notice the blue dots are gone. I can't necessarily resize it unless I um, go back to it, but I can delete it or do anything I want. So I can hold down on that image and now I can delete it. Okay, the shapes are the shape recognition, which is actually very helpful um, in a math course. It's going to turn your writing into shape. So if you want that perfect circle, just click on that shape recognition and then now you'll notice that my circle, which prior to that was ugly, so if I'm not in shape recognition, maybe that's what my circle looks like, but if I am in shape recognition, it will you know, look much nicer. I can draw a much better right triangle, um, things of that nature. Just be sure to click the shape recognition again if you want to go back to regular text, because otherwise if you leave the shape recognition on, this is what text looks like, because it creates them as shapes. Um, the pencil in the box is actually a zoom window feature. So a blue text box will appear, which if you type in that zoomed area, you'll see it appear on the page itself. You can move the zoom box around by holding it down and moving it on the page. So I can put my cursor or my um, stylus on that blue box, move it around, you'll notice I'm zoomed in on the top of that circle. So I can write something perhaps a little bit smaller here. And I'm in thick, sorry. And you'll notice that on the page itself, I'll close out of this by the red X at the, um, at the right side of your zoom box there. And you'll see that on the circle itself, it's fairly small. And I'll show you how to zoom in a second, but if I zoom into that area, I can kind of see that. Okay, um, the middle section of the toolbar is probably what I would use the most. The first option is the pen. So here you can first select whether you want a fountain pen or a rollerball pen by clicking the wheel on the top left. You'll see in settings, pen style is either fountain or rollerball. And then you have all these colors to choose from. You can either use the presets they have here. You can click custom, create your own colors. I just tend to be fine with presets. And then the line thickness, so this was two, here's three, and here's four. 
Um, and when you write a word, you can usually tell the difference. So here's the first one. This is the thin. <clears throat> here's the last one, which is a lot thicker. So you can change color and thickness um, relatively easily, and the students do not see that when it gets projected through the Apple TV. They don't see you changing colors, they just see the color actually change. Um, the next one is the highlighter, which has the similar features as the pen. So if you click on it, you can change the color of the highlighter, the thickness. I like to use usually the middle one, um, so you can highlight what you want, um, but you can highlight you know, even thicker, again, change the colors or stick with presets. The eraser is right next to the highlighter, and if you click on the eraser, you'll notice that you have three um, different erasers to choose from. Again, I tend to use the middle one, but if you want to erase more detail, then I would choose the smaller. But you can also undo what you wrote last, which I'll show you in a minute. The lasso tool is the next button on the toolbar. If you have something on your page that you want to move, so I will write move, then just lasso, so click on the lasso, circle it, and now I can put my um, stylus on that, that, I guess, object and that lassoed text, and I can move it anywhere I want to move it. So I want to move it over here to this circle click outside of the lasso, now I've moved that text. You can move images, you can move anything that's on your paper as long as you put the lasso around it. And also if you do the lasso, you have options. So if you hold your um, stylus down or your finger down on your iPad for a second, you can see you can either zoom, image, or text. Sorry, there it is. You can resize, color, um, cut, copy, or delete. So you can change it. Um, however, be sure when you're done with the lasso to click back on the pen so you can be in writing mode again, otherwise you're still in the lasso mode. The eyeglasses are a button I use often. If you don't want to be in the writing mode but you want to move the page around, zoom in or zoom out or add pages, then I click the eyeglass button. So when I'm zooming, I often use the eyeglass first um, and then I'll use my fingers two fingers on the iPad, spread them apart, you will zoom in, put your two fingers far apart and bring them close together and you will zoom I guess to your standard window again. So if you want to zoom in, put your fingers close together, spread them out. If you would like to zoom back out, put your fingers far and bring them close together. Um, I don't do that in the pen feature when I'm writing. Um, because if you put your fingers there and use two fingers, it will work. So I just did it now. But sometimes if you put your two fingers and you don't have equal pressure, it just leaves a mark on your page, and that's not necessarily what I want to do. So that's why I like the eyeglass button, is because then you're not in writing mode and you can zoom in and out. You can also take your page and go through, just swipe it to the left to go through if you want to go through the next pages. So now I'm on page four. And you'll notice here it says pull to add a page. So if I continue sliding to the left, it gives me a new blank page of that same type of template that I was in. So let me go back to page two. There we go. Um, the arrow pointing to the left that you can't see right now is the undone, or undo, excuse me. So let me go to page one and let me write something. So I'll write undo, and now you notice that that left curved arrow up here is now available for me to click. And what that's going to do is undo each letter as I wrote it. So now undo is gone because I clicked it four times. Then now you'll notice that the right arrow that's curved is available because that's the redo. So I can undo and redo as much as I want. So often if I do something and I don't like it, I'll just undo it rather than go to the eraser um, because I don't want to erase something accidentally next to it. I just want to undo what I just previously did. Um, the other suggestion I have while you're writing, and I'll go through this in a different video as well, is you'll notice my text is fairly large on this page that I'm writing. In order to make it neater, what I found is the more that I zoom in, the neater it becomes when I zoom back out. So if I want to be neater, and again this is pretty thick, I'll write in 
very zoomed in because then when I zoom out in a normal page view, it's going to look like a typical handwriting on a page. So it will print much nicer. Um, the other button on the toolbar, the three dots, that's kind of more. And these are somewhat self-explanatory. You can clear your page, you can search, go to a particular page, export or print right from here, um, change your template and document settings. Um, for example, instead of going to a page, I just scroll through to find that page. Um, the double arrows on the far right is the full screen. So I don't use this all that often either because then you lose your toolbar. So you lose all the functionality that we just discussed in this video. So when GoodNotes projects through the Apple TV in the classrooms we have, the full screen without the toolbar is projected. So the students never really see me changing colors, etc. They just see the end product. And I hope this helps you to begin annotating your documents. Thank you.